hard to imagine when there was no Montgomery County, no Rockville, and practically no residents. But that's how it was when this land was claimed for the King of England. In 1632, King Charles I named this land and territory around it for his wife Maria. Maryland, as it was called, was granted to Sir George Calvert, the first Lord Baltimore, who died soon after. The development of this new colony quickly fell to his son Cecil, the second Lord Baltimore, who, within a year, sent the first expedition to colonize this land, first settling in St. Mary's City. Mary Kay Harper, executive director of the Montgomery County Historical Society, explains the reason the colonists moved on from there. Well, the settlers were very interested in expanding, and uh, they were all settled in southern Maryland, and you always wanted more land for tobacco, and they could see all this empty land, and they were very uh, daring and courageous people just to come across the ocean to start with. And so that's how it began to go in, and what happened is they just kept expanding. The, um, the landowners in southern Maryland saw the opportunity of getting all this acreage for very, very little investment, and the only thing they had to do was to get a tenant farmer on it somewhere. And that's what most of this was developed as. It's always been land speculation in Montgomery County. <laughs> These early tenant farmers built one or two room log homes where they lived only during the months that they were working the land. The purpose was to send goods back to Southern Maryland and ultimately back to Britain. Maryland was one of the crown colonies. The king appointed the governor. He had an advisory council that uh, helped him decide. He did, made all the decisions, but they did advise him. The counties were divided up. There were original counties of which we were part of Prince George's County, which was an original county, and they had a sheriff who levied the taxes and justices. And the court really was the ruling body in the counties, more or less, though so all the laws, of course, and edicts came from the governor. As this area northwest of the Chesapeake Bay continued to grow, small settlements began to appear, serving the settlers as well as travelers who were passing through. Right here in what is now Rockville stood a tavern that figured prominently in our county's history. Peerless Rockville's executive director, Eileen McGuckian, explains. In 1774, there were about 100 people living in a settlement which was loosely known as Hungerford's Tavern because that was the main landmark here. Uh, we were on the western frontier of the colony of Maryland. We were part of Frederick County, which had been established in 1748 because so many people had, had moved up from uh, the, the lower part of Maryland. Um, we were on the road between Frederick Town, which was the capital of, capital of uh, Frederick County, and Georgetown, which was the main port. And tobacco farmers in this area were used to shipping their tobacco in huge hogsheads down to the port of either Georgetown or to Bladensburg. And at the point where the roads to Bladensburg and the, road, the Great Road down to Georgetown intersected was where Charles Hungerford's Tavern was. As colonists from all over this new world were growing dissatisfied with the taxes levied by Britain, Hungerford Tavern became a hub of political activity. On June 11, 1774, people from Lower Frederick County gathered there and developed the Hungerford Resolves, which began like this. Resolved unanimously, that is the opinion of this meeting that the town of Boston is suffering in the common cause of America. Resolved unanimously that every legal and constitutional measure ought to be used to all Americans. They were just trying to redress the, uh, the grievances. They were saying that the British ought to treat the colonies more equitably. It would be to break off all commerce with Great Britain and the West Indies until the said act be repealed and the right of taxation given. They also wanted to make sure that the information that the Hungerford Resolves were inserted in the Annapolis Gazette so that everyone could know that Lower Frederick County indeed was having the same sentiments. So the Hungerford Resolves in their entirety, and this is how we know how they read, um, were uh, described in the Annapolis Gazette and advertised in there on June 17th, which was just a couple of days before delegates from all over Maryland met in Annapolis to start, really start the chain of events that led to the Continental Congress and the Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War. So this is our little piece of the revolution. 
Soon after the colonists won independence, Montgomery County was born. By 1776, the area that was Frederick County had grown so large in population and just land mass, not grown in land mass, but there was more land mass to cover with the governing bodies that they, the general legislature decided to form three counties from Frederick County. And they divided up Frederick County into our county and Washington County. And the reason they're named Washington and Montgomery County are that they were named for war heroes since this was 1776. During the American Revolution, Richard Montgomery was the first general to be killed in battle. He died at this spot in Canada, having never set foot in Montgomery County. Montgomery County was born on September 6, 1776. Then it spanned the land between the Potomac River to the west and the Patuxent River to the east. At the southern end, it began at the east side of Rock Creek Park and ran northward to the line connecting the mouth of the Monocacy and Pars Spring. At the time, Georgetown was the biggest city. However, it was not the spot for this new county's seat. When you look at a map of Montgomery County, you see a, an established town known as Hungerford's Tavern in 1776 uh, on an established road, actually at a crossroad of another established road, and it became a natural for the county government to put its county seat there. Hungerford's Tavern in the town of the same name functioned as the county courthouse until 1779. It wasn't until 1801 that the town was given the name Rockville. But Montgomery County had not yet finished forming. In 1791, it changed again when the District of Columbia was established. It's a very interesting story, and it's still about land speculation. Because at the time of the formation of the federal government, there was a lot of jockeying about where the, the, national, the nation's capital would go. And of course, some people wanted it in New York and some in Philadelphia, and George Washington wanted it here. He thought this was the middle of the country and it was close to his home. And so people lobbied and did all kinds of things and they decided to carve out a square from Virginia and Maryland. And that is why Montgomery County looks different today because when they carved it out, not only did we lose Georgetown, which was our only port, but we lost the area all the way over from Georgetown over to Anacostia. Thank you.